Hi, welcome to Storytime. I'm Kimberlyn here at Life's Work Yoga. I'm curious to know how you are. I'm celebrating spring at this point by upping my allergy medication. My head is congested. My body is tired. And yet I want to take full advantage of the energy available in the spring. This morning on my walk to the studio, I couldn't help but pause once because I had startled the bunnies and didn't want to startle them again. But then it was also a pause to look at the blooming tulips, some still tight in a bud. In fact, this morning I saw my first bloom of my iris and the iris in my garden are of a special story. See, my mom gave me the original, maybe 25 or 30 rhizomes, the iris uh, propagation foundation. So not, like a tulip has a bulb, iris has what's called a rhizome, like a sweet potato versus a potato, a regular potato. So here's the deal. Um, my mom transplanted these same family of iris every time we moved as a kid, as a family. And that was a lot. So from South Dakota to Texas, to Maine, to Minnesota, to a second home in Minnesota. And then she took them to her retirement home in South Dakota. Now they've recently moved downsized again to another home in South Dakota. So when I bought my home, that was one of the gifts that my mom brought to me was these iris rhizomes. They are at my sister's house, they're at my brother's house, they're all over the country at this point, not just because of where we've moved, but where my siblings have moved. But the beauty of the rhizome, the beauty of bulbs and self-propagating flowers is that they continue to expand. Just like our energy when we can come together in authentic community. So I have since shared these same flowers with my studio here outside the uh, studio here at East Church Street. I've shared them with friends. I've shared them with non-local friends as I travel and visit other people. But the beauty is always a reminder of that beginning again of spring. And so in this practice, in this blooming season, and my allergies and my congestion is overwhelming, I want to focus not so much on changing as in becoming. And what I mean by that is, is critical to understanding yoga philosophy. And this was different for me than my upbringing in the church. And that in the church, I kind of learned, and I don't know that it was intentional. So this doesn't mean that it's, it's the intention or the dogma of the Christian Catholic religion, but I was taught to believe that I had to become something different, something new, and that the way to do that was by studying the gospel and by practicing the commandments, doing God's work, that I would overcome the yuck that was born in me, hence the whole concept of original sin. Now, I still struggle with all of that doctrine, that history, as much as I love the rituals of spirituality and community, there's a lot within there that I just wrestle with on a daily basis. And so when I was introduced to this yoga concept that at our center, this Atman center, is a pureness, a trueness, an originalness that is not only unique to us, but is also connected to the oneness, the grandness, the absolute concept of universe, all, God, wellness, the language doesn't necessarily translate verbatim, but the idea being that we are already part of the one. And so our practice of living in this body, in this time, in this world, is about peeling back the layers that perhaps were put upon us for protection, were learned by way of observation and adaptation, but may or may not suit us anymore. Think about 
Well, think about putting on last year's summer attire, right? It may not fit, especially after a year like we've had this year with a lot of self-quarantining and staying at home and not maybe doing all of the active things that we want to do. There may have been a little extra you developed over the year. So what I'm saying is that just like putting on last year's clothes might not fit just right, sometimes we adapt to our world by putting on armor, by putting on protective gear, by putting on personas that help us to fit in, but don't necessarily help us to show our true selves, to authentically show up. This is the difference between belonging and fitting in that Brene Brown alludes to in her research. But how does this relate to spring and blooming and becoming? Well, for me, the becoming is peeling back those layers. It's not always easy and it's certainly not always comfortable, but just like the rhizome and, and the bulb and the seed has to break through its outer shell, through the soil, up to the sunlight and to receive this nutrient that comes from the sun, we too have to break free of some of the protective layers that we have put on, that have been placed on us, or unintentionally we've kind of picked up and adopted. This releasing of our shell, our protective nature, is what allows our true Atman, our true center, our true self, to not only be expressed, but to be seen. I'm reminded of that notion, does a tree fall in the woods and if there's no one there to hear it, does it actually make a sound? Well, the same could be said. If I didn't pause to look at the flower, would it be as beautiful? Well, yes but the beauty would be contained and it wouldn't be as powerful because it wasn't shared, it wasn't witnessed. Hence, when we learn to witness our moments, moment by moment with as much vitality as possible, that is the bliss that yoga promises. But that promise, that, that bliss state is the union of connecting with our true self or becoming our best self. We are all created to have a best contribution, to have a best way of being. But it's trial and error that is the journey to learn. Hence, it's a practice. It's not something that can just be handed down verbatim from teacher to student. Just as each planting, each year my flowers take on a little bit of a different expression because the soil is different, the moisture level is different, the temperature is different. That affects their bloom rate, their bloom length, and even their color and how they show up. Same for us. So how is it that you want to take advantage of the energy that's available to you by way of the breath, yes, by way of the sunshine these days, and the rain, the nurturing of water that is needed to hydrate us and the earth. How is it that you can show up, peel back the layers of what has protected, kept you warm, kept you safe, masks, gloves? Think of all the ways in which we've had to increase our protection. I just got an immunization for the COVID-19 vaccine, and I'm grateful. It did kick me to the curb for the weekend for a little bit, needing some extra self-care, but I'm grateful for that immunization, not because it's going to guarantee that I stay well, but because it's yet another layer of a practice of doing what I can in order to connect with the oneness, the world, right? By taking care of my wellness, I am then more able to maybe help take care of you by sharing these practices of yoga, by leading a practice of living the principles of yoga in everyday life. I call it yoga living, and the strategy is simple. It's breathe, move, and rest. And in the spring, it can be tempting to put all of your energy, all of your eggs in one basket, so to speak, 
and to just move, to do the things that we haven't been able to do. And yet I really want to encourage you to balance every movement with some rest, not just sleep, but deep nurturing rest for every layer of your being, your heart space, your story, your memories. Maybe you've lost someone this year, be it to COVID or not. Maybe you've had a distance in a relationship that doesn't yet seem to be rekindled. Cultivating this energy of spring is about choosing where and how we show up, but also to whom, with whom we show our true fullest blooming. Because it's in that space that we're allowed to still be a work in progress. It's allowed to still be imperfect as we become our truest self. This is not an opportunity for judgment. It is, however, an invitation for wise application, tapas, or discernment about the best use of what I have available in terms of my energy, my resources, and even my skills so that I can become a little more authentically myself with every choice, with every moment of mindfulness today. And over time, this blooming, this becoming, yes, becomes a little easier. But in that notion as well, we expand or deepen our practice. So it's an ongoing journey, just like the flowers all come back next year with their new expression of what they've learned in their season of introspection of the off season. Well, this is the on season in so many ways, this spring blooming forth. So let's put forth our best understanding of who we be in service to one another and in celebration of the life that moves through. Take care of you. Take care of each other. Let me know if I can support you in living your more, most authentic yoga-based life. In other words, how can I help you breathe deeply, move freely, labor lovingly, so that you may live vibrantly, authentically, in connection and communion? Be well, and thanks so much for sharing these few minutes with me. Namaste.